About 17 years ago, I wrote to every important and influential person in the United Kingdom that I could find the address for, and I asked them what their favorite flavor ice cream is. I got a lot of replies, and here are some of the best. Hi, I'm Fredo Rockwell, and you may be wondering, Fredo, are you famous? Should I know who you are? And for most people watching this video, the answer is no, I'm not famous. But for those of you watching in Hong Kong or in places where Hong Kong cinema is popular, you may know me better as the lead prisoner in Stephen Chow's comedy classic of 1997, Lawyer Lawyer. And yes, that's really me. And yes, I will be making a video about my brief tenure as a very minor Chinese film star soon. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell so that you don't miss it. Now, back to ice cream letters. If you're wondering exactly what these things are, here's an example. This one is from Hugh Edwards, who is the lead presenter on BBC News. It reads, Dear Fredo, thank you for your kind letter. My favorite ice cream is coffee flavor. I have enclosed a signed photo as you requested. Best wishes, thanks for writing, Hugh. You might be wondering why Hugh Edwards would write me such a letter, so let me explain. Starting in late 2003, I wrote to hundreds of important people across the UK, some of them multiple times, with the exact same identical letter. It went, Dear so-and-so, What's your favorite flavor ice cream? I'd just like to know. Mine's chocolate. Please send me your picture from my very important person collection. Regards, Fredo Rockwell. Some of the people I wrote to were famous thanks to the positions they held, but I wasn't trying to write to celebrities per se. My goal was to get answers from important people, even if they did their important stuff in relative anonymity. So, for example, every banknote in the United Kingdom is signed by the chief cashier of the Bank of England, and in the early 2000s, this was a guy named Andrew Bailey, and I should explain to my American viewers, hello, that a banknote is what British people call money, as in dollar bills. I didn't know who this guy was, and to be honest, I'm not sure that many people in the UK outside of the Bank of England knew who this guy was, but everyone in the UK was walking around with bits of paper with his signature on it, so I figured he must be important. So I wrote to him, and here's the letter I got back. Oh, upside down. Dear Mr. Rockwell, thank you for your letter requesting a signed photograph and asking about my favorite flavor of ice cream. As you may be able to see from the enclosed photograph, I eat more of quite a few things than I should do, and that includes ice cream. Consistent with that, I have quite a lot of favorite flavors, or put another way, I am not too discriminating. Yours sincerely, <laughs> yours sincerely Andrew Bailey. And uh, yeah, hold on. That's exactly the same signature that appears on banknotes at the time. And um, it's just an amazing letter. It's an absolute... I, I don't know. I can't believe you wrote that. But anyway, um, I didn't know it at the time, but Andrew Bailey went on to do great things. And he's currently the governor of the Bank of England, the UK Central Banking Authority. So he's really important now. And, and that's pretty cool. By the way, if you want to look at any of these letters in more detail, they're all on my Twitter feed, at Fredo Rockwell, just my name. And if you follow me there, you will see new letters not included in this video as I tweet them. I'll put a link in the description. And in case you're wondering, yes, these are all 100% real. And no, I didn't know any of these people. They were just being nice. So I get a lot of questions about these letters. And I'm going to try and answer the most commonly asked ones now. The one I get the most is, of course, why? And I'm sorry, there's no good answer to this question. I mean, why not? But I can give a bit of an explanation. I, I'd written to famous people before, often various world leaders, just trying to get a reply or something or another. And I was usually trying to be a bit funny in my letters, if I'm honest. And sometimes I would get a reply, but not that often. And when I did, they were usually more like form letters than real letters. So one evening I hit upon the idea of writing Tony Blair and asking him what his favorite flavor ice cream was. Everyone has a favorite flavor ice cream, right? or at least that's what I thought at the time. And although it is technically personal information, it's the sort of information that if it got out, wouldn't be embarrassing. Again, that's what I thought at the time. Some of my correspondents didn't actually agree. 
And because the letter I wrote out was so short, exactly the same as I read out to you just a moment ago, I wrote six more people on the same day with the exact same letter. And they were Michael Howard, who was then leader of the Conservatives and therefore leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. Lord Hutton, who was then one of the law lords, one of the UK's top judges at the time, and this was before there was a UK Supreme Court. Charles Kennedy, who was then leader of the third largest party in the British Parliament, the Liberal Democrats. John Snow, the presenter of Channel 4 News. Rowan Williams, the then Archbishop of Canterbury. And of course, Her Majesty the Queen. I got a letter from uh, 10 Downing Street fairly quickly, but um, it just said that Tony Blair was too busy to answer me. Although there was this rather sort of striking photo, sort of leader of men type pose. I'll come back to Tony Blair though. Um, <clears throat> in fact, uh, with one exception on these initial letters, uh, I didn't get any responses that amounted to anything other than sort of polite brush offs. Although several included some photographs. Here's one from uh, Michael Howard, the leader of the opposition at the time, leader of the conservatives. So basically, it's just a letter saying, here's a photo, and then there it is. <laughs> right. Suitable for framing, as they say. Um, yeah, so that, that happened quite a lot, where I'd just get that. Sometimes I would write back and sort of demand an answer, but not always. Um, and then one day, I remember this very distinctly, coming home, and there was an answer from Jon Snow, who is one of the UK's most prestigious journalists. And as I said, he's the lead presenter on Channel 4 News. And he's also extremely cool. And he wrote back, Fredo, pecan ice cream, best wishes, Jon Snow. And look, he signed it and he even wrote my name there. So, you know, took a bit of time with that one. And as I said, Jon Snow is cool. So with encouragement from the coolest guy in the news business, I kept going. I wrote to Tony Blair again and everyone else from that initial list and started writing to new people too. Soon I had a letter from David Blunkett, who was the Home Secretary at the time. There's a photo of David Blunkett, signed. I never asked for them to sign it, but often they did, which is cool. And it says, uh, Dear Frida Rockwell, which uh, I did get from, well, I, do, I always get called Frida, but anyway, Many thanks for your letter. I'm afraid I'm not very keen on ice cream at all, so do not have a favorite. I am enclosing a photograph for your collection. With best wishes, uh, the right honorable David Blunkett. So, yeah. But he did, he did tell me he didn't have a favorite, so that was pretty cool. And uh, let's see what else have we got here. This is from Richard Branson, I think, who's the head of all things Virgin. I got it again. Lovely, bold, bold signature on this photograph here. And uh, the letter says, it's pretty succinct. He's a busy man. It just says, vanilla. Like this whole big piece of paper just for that. So there we are. It doesn't seem like a vanilla person. Vanilla was a surprisingly popular choice for lots of people. Uh, this is from Ann Whittacombe, who was an extremely prominent conservative politician at the time. No nonsense kind of politician. Uh, Dear Mr. Rockwell, I write on behalf of Miss Whittacombe in relation to your letter dated 4th December. I can inform you that Miss Whittacombe's favorite flavor of ice cream is vanilla. Miss Whittacombe hopes that you will get more positive responses from other members. Yours sincerely, Edward Wynne Stanley. Now, I've, I've always wondered, does he mean, like, vanilla is not a positive response and he hopes that I get, like, more colorful answers from other people? Or, like, additional positive responses, like this is a positive response. Anyway... The, the takeaway here is that Anne Whittacombe and uh, Richard Branson have something in common. Who would have thought that, huh? See, you're learning something. Here's one from uh, Britain's most famous meteorologist and weather presenter, Michael Fish, who is famous for his ties. Jon Snow is famous for his ties that are cool, and Michael Fish is famous for his ties, which are usually pretty awful. But he's much beloved. And it says, Dear Fredo, Michael Fish has asked me to let you know his favorite ice cream is coffee flavor, just like Hugh Edwards, huh? So both work for the BBC. Well, I mean, sort of appear on the BBC, I should say. And uh, there were many, many more. So I just kept writing. And over time, it occurred to me that if you could get every highly influential person in the United Kingdom to answer just one question, this would not be it. And that amused me. And, and I amused pretty easily. Some people were very hard to get replies from, or at least replies which told me what their favorite flavor ice cream is. So I wrote to Tony Blair a second time, 
third time. And I think it was on the third time I got this uh, response, which is, is like a card. And it's the same sort of thing again. It's saying that uh, he gets too many requests to answer them all. But instead of the leader of men pose, I got the first time. I got this photo with um, sort of, you know, your friendly neighborhood prime minister kind of. Um, but then eventually on the seventh attempt, which is pretty crazy, I guess I wore them down. I got this letter, which says, uh, Mr. Freda Rockwell, dear Mr. Rockwell, the prime minister has asked me to thank you for your recent letter and to explain that many calls on his time make it impossible for him to answer your questions personally. Again, it's like every time. And of course, I keep writing, so there are more and more calls. Anyway, Mr. Blair's favorite flavor ice cream is chocolate. He sends his good wishes. So there we are, chocolate. That's the favorite. Now, I did write to um, to Tony Blair's wife, Sherry Blair, also known as Sherry Booth, QC, because she is a, QC is like a really high-powered attorney or barrister. Uh, I got this nice photograph of her. She sent me a response straight away, if I remember correctly. Now, remember, Tony Blair's is chocolate. It says, uh, thank you for your recent letter to Ms. Booth, requesting a photograph for your collection. And then it says, you've also asked about Ms. Booth's favorite ice cream. It is strawberry. So if you can imagine such a thing, what I call the Neapolitan spectrum, you've got chocolate on one side, strawberry on the other. The Blairs sit on either end of it. Interesting. I mean, I guess it's what they say, opposites attract. So there, you've learned something else today from this video. Um, now, Charles Kennedy. I said uh, I didn't get a response from him, but actually I did. I, did, I thought I didn't. And as I was writing him, asking him again, uh, a, a letter came in and then I got a reply to the second letter. So I got two answers from Charles Kennedy. Let's have a look. This one, which is the one I've tweeted, I think it says, uh, favorite ice cream flavor is vanilla. So, and then there's this nice picture. Uh, we miss Charles Kennedy. He died sadly a few years ago. And, uh, but then I got this other letter. So remember that one said vanilla. This is a real letter. Uh, Dear Mr. Rockwell, thank you very much for your letter. I'm sorry for the delay in replying. I'm pleased to inform you that my favorite flavor of ice cream is also chocolate. I've enclosed a signed photograph for your collection. Now, we have uh, diverging information here. I'm going to go with this one as being correct for a couple of reasons. Once First of all, it's just, a, you know, it's an actual letter instead of someone just dashing off something. Uh, so it's probably more likely written with Charles Kennedy's input. But also, he was an extremely effective politician, in my view. I got the same photograph. Um, and you'll notice in the letters that I get, the, the more sort of effective politicians tend to say that their favorite flavor ice cream is chocolate. And I don't have enough data to make a scientific conclusion on that, but that's my theory. So I think it's chocolate. So um, I kept track of who I wrote to in this reporter's notebook here. Um, I'm not a reporter, but they're kind of the useful size. So uh, I just wrote down who I had written, and then I wrote numbers for how many times I'd written them, and ticks if I got a letter, and what flavor. And it goes on for page, pages and pages. I mean, I don't, I'm, I've not counted them, but hundreds of people. And uh, yeah, there we are. So, so sometimes I had to get creative to get an answer. And the best example of this was Rowan Williams, the Archbishop of Canterbury. So I wrote to his office at Lambeth Palace, which is where the Archbishop works. And I got this letter, which is basically a, a polite, here's your photograph, but let's not talk about ice cream letter. Or it doesn't say that. It doesn't say anything about ice cream. There's a rather striking photograph of the Right Reverend. And uh, so, of course, I wrote back several times, I think. And eventually I got this letter, which said, uh, Dear Mr. Rockwell, thank you for your letter. The Archbishop has not expressed any preference for a particular favorite flavor of ice cream. And I have not ever seen him eat ice cream, so I am unable to help you with your query. I am afraid. I'm sorry to send disappointing news, but thank you again for taking the trouble to write. Um, a very polite letter, but I got the distinct impression they would rather me not take the trouble to write anymore. So I thought about just sort of making do with that, because at least the letter talks about ice cream, but no, that wouldn't do. 
So I wrote to the Reverend Jane Williams, who is a noted theologian, but also married to Rowan Williams. And uh, she wrote back to me, also from Lambeth Palace, and it says, Dear Mr. Rockwell, thank you for your letter about my husband's taste in ice cream. He isn't a great ice cream eater, but he does like sorbets. He also likes vanilla, particularly the kind called Joe's that can be found in and around Swansea, where he grew up. I do hope this satisfies your collector's zeal. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Jane Williams. So how about that, huh? A letter from the wife of the Archbishop. Bet you never thought you'd see that on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I was, I was quite pleased with that. Hopefully I wasn't too annoying. Um, there were some people I, I really desperately tried to get answers from, though, and was not successful with in the end. And the most notable of these was the Chancellor of the Exchequer at the time, Gordon Brown. I, I got this photo of him pretty much straight away. It's a sort of action pose. Like, I'm, he's smiling. He's not uh, a uh, politician known for smiling. Of course, he became prime minister uh, a few years later. Um, but yeah, this is sort of, I'm getting out of the, the fancy car at the summit to sign a deal. That's what it looks like to me. And, I, and it came with a nice compliment slip. But that's all I ever got. I wrote and wrote and wrote, wrote everyone I could think of. Uh, never got an answer. So that was disappointing. Now, you might be wondering if I ever got a response back from the Queen. And, well, let me show you. I have this stack of uh, correspondence from Buckingham Palace, which I will share with you in a future video. So, sorry to uh, give you a cliffhanger there, but that's a reason to subscribe, huh? So, go ahead and hit the bell. That way you don't miss it. So, I also get asked quite a lot which, uh, which letters are my favorites. I'm going to share a few favorites with you now. This one is from Sir Christopher Meyer who was at the time the chairman of the Press Complaints Commission, or PCC, and that was an industry-supported uh, regulatory association, so it wasn't government. And uh, its job was to handle complaints about the media, especially if they, um, if they divulged something or sort of intruded on the privacy of someone, especially if they were famous or were a member of the royal family. So in that context, I'll read you this. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Rockwell, as chairman of the Press Complaints Commission, I have, of course, been reflecting on whether your request intrudes into my privacy. So how about that? Ice cream preferences, <laughs> ice cream preferences are a very intimate thing. What if you were to ask me next what kind of deodorant I use? Where would this end? If perchance my ice cream preference were to emerge in a front page splash in, say, The Guardian, would I be constrained to compa uh, complain to myself? I mean, this is brilliant. And I wonder if he now, if I, as I read this, if he thought maybe I was a journalist. I don't know. These are questions of cosmic importance, but in the interest of free speech and best practice in ice cream making, I've decided to open myself up to your question. Now, right, so far, this has been a brilliant letter, but it goes on uh, into a sort of a new tack here. The answer is Ben & Jerry's Dolce de Leche. This was a flavor developed, I believe, for the Argentine market. It has now swept the world. It is basically condensed milk mixed with the ice cream. I like it because as a Second World War baby, I was frequently fed condensed milk and retain a weakness for it on porridge, a true gourmet dish, as the Americans would say. I, I've never heard of that. I, I mean, maybe Americans say gourmet dish. We don't put uh, condensed milk on porridge. Anyway, incidentally, among condensed milk con uh, consumers, there has always been a great debate about the relative merits of Nestle and Fussell. It's worse than Arsenal and Man U. That's the biggest uh, football rivalry here in the UK. I am a Nestle man myself, straight out of the tin and on a wooden spoon. Yours sincerely, Sir Christopher Meyer. It's a brilliant letter in so many ways, and the fact that he took the time to wrote it, I, I've always been very um, sort of overwhelmed when I read it. I think, wow, he spent all this time on it. Uh, but also on Nestle, I don't know if you can see that, he put the little uh, accent aigu, I think it is in French. He hand wrote them because I guess his typewriter didn't have them. So he wanted to be super accurate. So that, that's just a really cool letter. That's, that's a top letter. Just for reference, the other person that told me their favorite was Dolce de Leche ice cream, which I admit I'd never, I'm not sure I've ever had it, even now. Um, this is Jermaine Greer, the noted feminist and author and intellectual. It just says, my favorite flavor ice cream is Dolce de Leche. Best wishes, Professor G. Greer. So there we are. Those are the two. Now, I have another favorite letter, um, letters from Robin Cook, who was the first foreign secretary under Tony Blair and who famously resigned so that he could uh, denounce Tony Blair's, or actually completely scorch Tony Blair's 
uh, decision to invade Iraq. And uh, all I got back was my letter, my original letter, as you can see, it has the text I mentioned before and a picture. So I wrote him, I think, multiple times, but in one letter, I know because he sent it back to me again, I, I asked him, um, look, I know you're busy. I just want to know your ice cream. Thanks for the picture. But could you just tell me in one word what your favorite flavor ice cream is? So <laughs> I got this, which uh, is, again, my, that letter where I said that. And it says rum and raisin flavor here on the bottom, which is more than one word. So I feel very grateful. Um, and it's, I doubt it was him writing it, but I like to think it was and that maybe he was a bit annoyed with me because that's my impression of Robin Cook. That he was like someone who was like really busy, slightly annoyed, but very principled. So I mean that in a nice way. I didn't really want to annoy him. But um, and sadly, we lost Robin Cook. He died tragically on holiday about a year later. And it was a real loss. So when he resigned in Parliament, his speech uh, got a standing ovation which I think is the only recorded standing ovation in history of the House of Commons, even from opposing MPs. It was quite something. And it's just a sort of high point of the politics that I've witnessed since I moved here, even though I didn't agree with him on a lot of issues. Um, he's the sort of politician that you wish more politicians were like. And uh, I'm sure he probably might have been difficult to work with as a politician because I, I, got the, I got the idea he was a bit inflexible maybe. Uh, when people would want him to be flexible, but that's kind of what we want from our leaders sometimes. So anyway, it's quite a special letter for me for, for lots of reasons. So I, I definitely also had a favorite picture, which I'll share with you now. So this beauty is from the Lord Chancellor at the time, Charlie Faulkner, Lord Faulkner. Um, so this he was the last Lord Chancellor before the position was reformed drastically. Uh, and so he was the last one to wear a wig and this whatever that is and this collar i think he pulls it off really well especially the gloves here um yeah and uh yeah so this this photo as well it's it's sent on like this really heavy card it feels like it was framed on the wall of his office and i wrote in and they said what are we going to send them and they pulled it off the wall <laughs> took it out of the frame and posted it to me it doesn't feel like a publicity still like you get from celebrities you know that it is signed though so that's cool um, but anyway, the original letter that came with that photo basically was the, here's a photo letter, you know, didn't really answer the question. So of course I wrote back and, uh, got this answer. So Lord Falconer has asked me to thank you for your letter dated 1st of June and to let you know that his favorite flavor ice cream is rum and raisin, just like Robin Cook. And, uh, yeah, so there we are. But I have to say my top letter of all time is this one, which came from the Secret Intelligence Service, which is probably better known as MI6 and is the agency that James Bond supposedly worked for. I wrote to Sir Richard Dearlove, who is the chief of SIS, or was at the time. That's a position known as C, and it's a position that is portrayed as M in the James Bond films. So I wrote this not really expecting to get a response, but um, I got this very strange letter with no letterhead. And it says, Dear Fredo, thank you for your recent letter. And then it says, I know this will come as something of a disappointment, but I have to tell you that SIS does not issue photographs of members of staff, nor do we divulge their taste in ice cream, etc." <laughs> SIS is a secret organization and must remain so if it is to carry out its work effectively. So basically, we can't tell you Sir Richard Dearlove's favorite flavor of ice cream for national security reasons. <laughs> um, it is for these reasons that SAS does not comment on matters such as you mentioned in your letter. I'm sure you will understand, but I am enclosing a fact sheet, a fact sheet on SIS for your information. There it is. And um, then it's signed by D.W. Clayton, who as far as I can tell, is not a real person. I'm really sorry, D.W. Clayton, if you are, but there's no sign of you on the internet. I looked the other day. Um, yeah, and like I said, this was a really odd letter. I don't know if it'll show up in camera, but there's this sort of embossed royal seal, but no other letterhead. Um, and the envelope, it's also this strange green color. The envelope uh, says Foreign and Commonwealth Office and has the seal again on the back, but that's it. 
Anyway, it's one of my favorite letters. I've never been able to figure out if it was uh, a really officious person or someone who was having a bit of a laugh themselves. I, I don't know, but there we are. So that's it for now. I've got more letters I can share with you, but as I mentioned before, I'm hoping to do other videos on this. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss them. And if you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button and add a quick comment. Now, I really like knowing that you like the video, That's so the comment helps with that. But whenever you comment, it signals to YouTube, this is a video that you're enjoying and its godlike algorithm will then start showing it to more people, which would be kind of cool. So I'd appreciate it if you had a moment. If you don't, don't worry. Um, also, back in July, I did an interview with Richard Porritt from the New European podcast about these letters, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to hear it. This uh, New European podcast is one of the absolute best for following UK politics, at least as far as I, that's what I consider it. Um, I highly recommend it. If you're watching this video from another country, but you want an accessible way to start following the British political scene, I would give it a try. I mean, it's basically just people talking. It's not like this sort of highly polished thing, which is why I think everyone loves it. It's also very funny. And uh, yeah, so that's it for now. We'll be back um, hopefully before too long. Check out my other videos on strange political incidences. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to do more videos about ice cream and, and of course, ah! my career as a Chinese film star. So thank you very much.